This is the story of the trickster. Ji Woon Hak craved attention and fame even from a young age. He started performing tricks with throwing knives at his family's restaurant, which attracted tourists who gladly doled out their money to witness such a spectacle. Ji Woon's father spent the earnings on singing and dancing lessons for him, pushing Ji Woon to become the star he never could. And after years of showcasing his abilities at talent shows, Ji Woon was recruited by none other than Yun Jin Lee, a producer at Mighty One Entertainment. He was shipped off to a dormitory in Seoul, where he would train for 14 hours a day to become a pop star. And his insane dedication paid off as Yun Jin selected him to join the up and coming band No Spin. He became an instant sensation and lived in a daze of adoration and interviews. However, over time, Ji Woon grew dissatisfied with the attention shared among his bandmates and yearned for more. Fate would, however, grant him with a gift. One day, during a recording session for No Spin, Ji Woon's bandmates became trapped in the control room due to a fire. Ji Woon froze and could not bring himself to rescue them. They screamed for him to save them, but he only stood in absolute bliss, intoxicated by the sound of them crying out his name. No one would survive. Ji Woon was celebrated as a tragic figure, a hero who did everything he could to save his band. He was reborn as a solo artist called The Trickster. After the fire, Ji Woon would never be the same. Something evil had shifted inside him. Away from the public eye, Ji Woon began targeting people who lived alone and torturing them. He wanted to capture the sounds of their screams and use them to create music. Now, the actual lore describing how he captured their sounds is very graphic and detailed, so I'll be summarizing this section. Feel free to pull up his actual lore if you're morbidly curious. He adjusted his methods and began abducting his victims, bringing them to abandoned buildings where he could let their voices carry unrestrained emotion. He recorded each session and synthesized the sounds into his music, creating a unique and disturbing style. Ji Woon left hints for the police at his crime scenes, creating dazzling spectacles of his victims as a plea for attention. Due to violence now becoming his preferred art style, his music career took a hit. The money machine machine was slowing down. Mighty One executives pointed their fingers at him, and it was decided that he was no longer allowed to self-produce his songs. Ji Woon was devastated. If they cannot understand his art, he would incorporate them into it until they did. He decided to plan his magnum opus for a private show for the board members of Mighty One. He transferred a ridiculous amount of money to a veterinarian for nitrous oxide, and then bribed a stage technician for access to the private theater. Again, the magnum opus is quite graphic, but to summarize, he knocked all the board members out with nitrous oxide, piled them up on the stage, and used his throwing knives to make them sing. However, among the board members in the theater was Yun Jin Lee, who had saw the potential in Ji Woon and gave him the opportunity at stardom. Before the magnum opus began, Ji Woon had propped her up as the sole audience member. He thought she deserved special access to the coming display of wonder. After the final act, he made his way to Yun Jin with his blade in hand. But once he got to her, the fog. From where, he didn't know. But it billowed around them, damp, cool, comfortable. He saw the grand stage, hospitals and temples, forests and slaughterhouses, an eternal plain adorned with rusted hooks, sustained by the million eyes that would watch him, run from him, experience him. All he had to do was accept, become an implement of the fog, and most importantly, make them scream. Encore.